Chapter 12 His Holiness Kyabje Pabongka Dojichang Pabongka Rinpoche was one of the greatest Buddhist masters of the 20th century and among the most influential teachers in Tibet. When he was born, a light shone in the room and people outside saw a protector standing on top of the house. At seven years old, he was recognized by the eminent Chapa Rinpoche Choji Lopsang Darge. You should go to Sarame Monastery to pursue your studies. Something wonderful will happen to you in the future. Yes, Rinpoche. Thank you. I'll do that. Why was he called Pabongka Rinpoche then? Pabongka Rinpoche was recognized as a reincarnation of the Changkya line, which included well-known scholar Changkya Ropel Doje. It's just politics. Anyway, the name Changkya was ruled out and the boy was declared to be Pabongka instead. When he was young, he had nothing, no money and no food to eat. However, everybody had at least a little bag of barley flour. So sometimes when there was no food, he would run out from the monastery, fill his bag with sand and put a little barley on top to smell and taste a bit. He would live on that for several days. Although he had a mediocre academic career at Sarame Monastery and was often ridiculed for being dull, he received his Geshe degree. For 10 years, Pabongka Rinpoche studied the Lamrim under Dapo Lama Jampel Nongdrup, and by his pure guru devotion and consistent effort, he became an erudite scholar. Pabongka Rinpoche was an extraordinary practitioner and teacher, known especially for his mastery of the Haruka Bodhi Mandala and the Vajrayuni practice. Once, Pabonga Rinpoche was visiting a cave at Chimburi in Tibet, where there was a Haruka image. The Haruka image spoke to him. From now on, for the next seven generations, I will protect and help anyone who practices my teachings. As Haruka spoke, a great deal of nectar flowed forth. This nectar was collected and made into very powerful healing pills. Thousands of people then received the Haruka Bodhi Mandala and every teaching on it directly from Pabongka Rinpoche. Pabongka Rinpoche is still to this day considered to be a living emanation of Haruka. Pabongka Rinpoche was very popular and thousands of students came to him for teachings. His speech was so powerful that everyone could hear his teaching even though there were no loudspeakers in those days. One day, a great general, Dapon Sago, came to Pabongka Rinpoche's teaching. He was an arrogant man and wanted to see what was so special about this Lama. Although it is not proper to bring weapons to, nor wear a hat at a Dharma talk, Dapon Sago did not care. However, as Dapon Sago listened to Pabongka Rinpoche, his mind began to change. This Lama speaks such wisdom. He suddenly became conscious of the weapon he had brazenly brought in. Embarrassed and humbled, Dapon quietly slipped away from the teaching. One day, Dapon came to see. Rinpoche, please give me the layman's vows. From then on, he was seen to follow Pabongka Rinpoche to every public teaching he gave. The 13th Dalai Lama observed Pabongka Rinpoche's popularity and scrutinized his teachings closely, but could find no fault in them. Pabongka Rinpoche is so popular. Are his teachings correct? I've been listening to his teachings closely, but I can't find anything wrong with them. At that time, Pabongka Rinpoche was teaching the Lamrim according to the little-known southern tradition called Shagyu, and many scholars debated the source of these teachings. What Lamrim is this, Rinpoche? Where does it come from? Is the source authentic? Of course. These teachings come from my guru, Dapo Rinpoche, who is infallible. The 13th Dalai Lama thus decided to question him on this. Tell Pabongka Rinpoche that he must explain this system of Lamrim. Is it authentic? His Holiness the 13th Dalai Lama is asking what is the authenticity of your teachings? What would Rinpoche like to do? Under these circumstances, I shall reply. I will dictate and you take notes. I write with regards to your questions on the Southern tradition of the Lamrim. 
The Buddha has explained this in the most important sutra. At this moment, Your Holiness is seated in the study. Please look behind you on the third shelf from the right, on the second shelf from the top. Look for the fifth book from the left. It has a brown cover. On page 149, on the fourth line, the book gives an explanation about this. This is the proof. From the Kangyu, please refer to the book written by our Sangha Rinpoche, which can be found in Your Holiness Room on the third shelf. In the outer volume, which is orange, on page 89, from the fourth to the tenth line, you will find an explanation. There is also evidence from the Tibetan tradition. Please look in the works of your late master, Prachok Jampa Rinpoche. In volume number four of his collected works, which is in Your Holiness's bedroom on the topmost shelf, the proof is on page 30. Get me that book! Now, Pabunka Rinpoche is exactly right. I cannot fault him. Pabunka Rinpoche was so respected that he was invited to both Nyingma and Galupa monasteries throughout Tibet, where he gave teachings according to the varying levels and states of their minds. While he was a very sound Galupa Lama, he was also able to teach students of other traditions perfectly. One of Pabongka Rinpoche's greatest achievements was a famous Lamrim discourse he gave to thousands of disciples in 1921. This included eminent lamas of the day such as His Holiness Trijan Rinpoche and His Holiness Ling Rinpoche. This is vast and profound for those of discriminating wisdom, yet easy to understand and remember for those of lesser intelligence. This famous Lamrim discourse was then published as Liberation in the Palm of Your Hand, composed by none other than His Eminent Student, His Holiness Trijan Rinpoche. Among his distinguished deeds and teachings, Pabonga Rinpoche composed Dorji Shudin's Sacred Kang So, melodious drum victorious in all directions, based on the vision of his guru, Takpu Pemavaja. Dorji Shudin will become the new protector of the Glupas for years to come. We must bring him to the world now and worship him. In 1949, when Tibet was experiencing unrest. What's happening? Many people have left Tibet, Rinpoche. War is coming. (sighs) I don't think I can leave Tibet. But if I stay here, the Dharma may be lost. He decided to pass the entire lineage of Dodi Shudin along with many other precious teachings to his most devoted and illustrious student, Kyabje Trijan Rinpoche. Trijang Rinpoche, I must entrust these teachings to you. It is now up to you to preserve this tradition and share the teachings with the world. 